joining us ideas today. So let me just start because some people are still joining. Um, again, on behalf of ideas, I'm very excited to have you all today for our webinar. Today's topic is data, big data and pred predictive analytics. Big data um, related to, um, well, today's, today's speaker is Dr. Joe McClure. And before I'll pass my presentation to um, Dr. John McClure, let me just briefly describe what is ideas, what we do and why we do that. So big thanks to everyone who can join us today and for those who are watching the video on our YouTube channel, hope you can join us next time online. And before we jump into the webinar, and while some people are still joining, let me just briefly remind you what is ideas. So ideas is International Data Engineering and uh, Science Association. We are a nonprofit organization. And our mission is to bridge the gap between academia and industry. So basically, we're very excited about data science, machine learning, AI, and blockchain. And we are sharing this um, enthusiasm with others. And here, we connect these passionate people from data science background with each other and share the ideas and thoughts um, and just simply collaborate. So this is our roadmap. We started in 2016 and we are moving on and hosting conferences across the country. So three years ago, our first conference was held in USC, on USC campus and later we started to grow rapidly, like organizing conferences on different topics across the country in New York, um, in Chicago, uh, Boston, LA. Recently, we held the SoCon conference in Los Angeles Convention Center, and we are going to held the next, um, our big conference in Los Angeles in October. So hope you can join us. Don't miss this opportunity. So apart from just conferences, we also conduct um, different hackathons and online workshops and weekly webinars on different topics with interesting guests and speakers. Um, this is our like photo gallery. Um, this is SoCal conference at USC 2016, very first one. And this is New York Blockchain Leadership Connect. Um, this one is in Chicago Blockchain Leadership, really big one. Um, this one is uh, SoCal conference in Pasadena 2017. And this one, the recent one, SoCal conference at Los Angeles Convention Center. We had more than 300 speakers. And this was a huge event, and we're planning the next one in October. Um, so yeah, I, I hope you can join us. All right, so yeah, this is just some photos. As you can see, we have a lot of different conferences. Apart from conferences, we also um, organize a lot of mixers and meetups with different universities like UCLA, USC, UC Irvine, University of Washington, um, MIT, Boston College. So if you are new to ideas, this is our website, ideassn.org. You can connect um, with us through LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube. This is QR code for our YouTube channel. You can find everything about ideas, especially our previous webinars on our YouTube channel. And now let me introduce our wonderful speaker for today. Uh, Dr. John Wu. he's a computer information science professor at California State University of Los Angeles. Uh, he has been working with big data more than 10 years. That's actually a lot. Apart from just uh, working as a uh, professor, he's also um, serves as a technical advisor at ISAC Engineering. But I guess Dr. John Wook would um, explain about himself, himself more, um, like more details. So thank you, Dr. John Wook. Um, thank you for doing this. And I'm passing the whole presentation to you. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Daria. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me share my screen. Sure. And can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, cool. Thank you. So let me start my presentation. Uh, thank you, everyone. It's my honor to present my talk today. So I'm going to talk about big data. So I'm going to introduce big data and also the predictive analysis using big data here today. So the, I'm going to present, uh, start introducing myself, and then I'm going to uh, talk about kind of a history of a big data. And then I'm going to show you the, the predictive analysis using big data platform. And then I'm, I'm going to summarize the 
the what I have talked today. So the, I've been uh, teaching at California State University, Los Angeles since 2002. And also I went to USC for my computer science and computer engineering. But actually I uh, teach at a business school, uh, especially at the Department of Information Systems, because you know, the, even all other like a business school, medical school, they, are, are, they need to use computer and data and information. Okay. So uh, just for people who do not know the, where the California State University Los Angeles, you know, I, I have a small map here. So this is the Los Angeles area. And there is a downtown here. And there is a Pacific Sea to the west here. And then there is a north, northern part. And then uh, around the downtown, uh, we, we says heart of Los Angeles. There is a California State University Los Angeles. I mean, the Cal State LA. And then there's other uh, universities such as USC and UCLA around the here. So uh, this is the, our website of Carsta LA. And the, it, is, uh, it has been like 70 years that Carsta LA uh, started. And there are like 28,000 students. And there are like 0 0.2 million alumni. And, I believe USC is number one in over the mobility to make the all alumni um, can improve their uh, lifestyle once they get uh, graduated. Okay. So since the because of the geolocation, the the benefit, um, I have been uh, working uh, many companies in Hollywood, such as uh, the Warner Brothers, and I've been involved in a project like an online uh, matrix game. And also I've been uh, working on search engine development uh, for business listings in the States, uh, City Search, and also the content management system in e-entertainment, and also the web service in ARM, the mobile chip company. So especially when I work in City Search, uh, that is, uh, I, I had a chance to explain get exposed to, to big data because city search, uh, they have been generating uh, the uh, massive data set uh, over the business listings in the states. Plus, uh, the, they have uh, many reviews from the users for about the business. For example, the reviews about Starbucks in uh, the Westwood uh, in Century City. And those uh, it was like 10 years ago, but at that time, the city search actually uh, used those data, including uh, the user's review to uh, make, to generate a profit by uh, sharing, selling those uh, data to third party companies such as uh, Google, Yahoo, etc. cetera. Um, uh, but the, uh, uh, like uh, 10 years ago, the, those data set that are generated from actually database are uh, about 700 gigabytes that include the business listings and the user's review. Uh, the, the 700 gigabyte that is not that huge these days, but at the moment, uh, at the time, it was like a huge data set that is really not easy to handle. And at that time, um, I was, or I heard about like a big data. Uh, that is the term from, there is kind of a new term that comes from uh, the Northern California, like a Silicon Valley. And since then I was interested in uh, big data. So I, uh, I was collaborating with the uh, leading big data companies such as uh, Cloudera, Hortonworks, and like a, a cloud computing uh, companies such as Amazon AWS, since then um, the Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure, IBM, and Oracle Cloud. Even I uh, collaborate with the, the ISAC Engineering for smart factory big data approach in Korea. And also uh, these are kind of partners that I've been working to uh, 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 work with, the, uh, work on like a uh, big data that include uh, big data services, big data platform, and BI tool. 
And also I collaborate with, uh, again, ESAG Engineering in Korea for a big data smart factory approach, and also with uh, Los Angeles City and LA Fire Department and USC and Penn State. So that is brief introduce, introduction of myself, and let me uh, move on uh, the kind of history of big data. So as you know, the, we have been um, uh, seeing, we have been observing the data issues uh, because of a uh, massive data set that are generated by many devices. So uh, they, those data set that are generated from many devices, uh, it could be uh, the tens of gigabyte or the terabyte or petabyte. Uh, as you know, we use too many devices that generate data, uh, even uh, from the traditional web browser, I mean, from traditional web and from uh, the sensor that is actually the IoT, Internet of Things, and even from uh, the bioinformatics data and social data, Twitter, Facebook, and streaming data set that is part of uh, IoT as well, and smartphone, online game. So we have uh, too many data set. And the, the, I mean, we, we have been using a legacy approach. I mean, we can use uh, servers to uh, uh, handle those data set. Uh, but mostly the, the traditional approach to handle those massive data set is to uh, improve the speed of CPU or to increase the storage size of the server or the, uh, the, the computer. We, we can do it, but the only problem is the it is too expensive whenever you uh, the, uh, improve your computer's resources. It, is, it becomes too expensive. That is the problem. So it's like, you know, uh, traditionally we have a small gun, like a small cannon, and then uh, we invest a lot of money to uh, make gigantic, crazy, like a the cannon, that works well, but the problem is it is too expensive. So um, it's, it's like the same in data, using the traditional approach, uh, we can make a huge expensive server um, to handle the massive data set that is not structured or that is semi-structured. Uh, people normally call uh, the, there are data that has three Vs or four Vs, like uh, based on the data's properties such as velocity, volume, and variety. Uh, again, we can make really gigantic, expensive computer and server, but it, it is too expensive. So in another approach, maybe we could uh, make a new system that is not expensive. Uh, and also that system is to, uh, that new system can uh, do, uh, I mean, that system can uh, provide the, the main two services of a server and computer, such as uh, it should store massive data set, and also it should compute or analyze uh, or process massive data set. So the first company who met uh, that problem of the massive data set was definitely a Google. So to uh, store those uh, uh, massive data set to index their uh, the, the search engine, they actually made a Google file system that is based on a distributed system using non-expensive commodity computers. It means that they simply use, the, for example, Linux servers. That is the people uh, just use in company, right? Also to uh, uh, compute or analyze or process this massive data set, uh, they also provide a, a computing service uh, like a MapReduce uh, that has been, uh, that has been like a function that uh, mostly used in uh, AI, LISP, et cetera. So simply they, uh, for computing engine, they provide a parallel computing system uh, using non-commodity, I mean, non-expensive commodity servers. So basically the Google uh, 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 provide an idea 
uh, for another supercomputer. As you know, traditional supercomputer is uh, distributed parallel computing systems. And then they, uh, about 15 years ago, they published the papers of their services. So it's like, uh, this is like a new uh, the idea, like, you know, instead of uh, uh, making the huge gigantic uh, the cannon that, that are very expensive, you can uh, produce like hundreds of or thousands of gunmen as soldiers. So uh, if you have like hundreds of or thousands of gunmen or soldiers, you can, you may resolve the issue. You may uh, win the game in the battle. But definitely, since you have many servers, like many uh, soldiers, you need a uh, resource manager that can uh, control or monitor uh, those individual servers and human. So for example, like uh, this is a very famous uh, approach to uh, handle um, I mean, the manage the 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 government in like 500 uh, years ago. Like uh, since you can load one bullet for your gun, uh, the first row you can shoot, and then second row they are ready to shoot, and third row they are loading a bullet. So once you have a three-step like a soldiers who are ready then you can uh, efficiently use uh, uh, each human or each server without any problem so simply you can resolve the issue you can address any issue so based on this idea um, uh, uh, apache community uh, especially from uh, apache notch project the apache hard project has been uh, split in about 11 or 12 years ago. Um, that is uh, motivated by Google, Google's paper 15 years ago. And they uh, named the project as a Hadoop. And this gentleman is Doug Cutting, who started uh, this Hadoop project. So the basic idea is uh, for the traditional supercomputer, um, you have a, a, a multiple storage servers. You, you can call it node. You have a multiple storage server. Uh, and you have also separated the multiple computer, multiple compute servers. So you have a storage and compute that are separated. And they are multiple servers. And then they are all connected through the network. So this architecture worked well, uh, especially when data size is small. Uh, but uh, when the big data era came out, uh, the, this network speed becomes bottleneck. So just reading data may take uh, several minutes or hours or even days. So uh, the new system is actually to put storage to the computing service. So new system like a Hadoop, uh, you have a single computer or a single node uh, that has a storage and a computing unit all together. So in physical server, you have a computing uh, service and storage service together. So, and these multiple nodes are connected through network as well. So it means that uh, uh, this architecture try to avoid uh, any data exchange between among the nodes, but for each node, uh, you can assign allocate data that can be uh, uh, processed by a, uh, the computing unit. Yeah. So uh, the many, like a large scale data set are, are uh, split into uh, blocks to be stored into each node. And then each node, uh, the block in each node is processed by each uh, the, um, the computing unit. So this, is, this has been popular in uh, the big data as a, a major architecture, but nowadays, I mean, for several years, the cloud computing service, they actually adopt the traditional uh, supercomputer architecture uh, by uh, uh, using a high-speed network. So nowadays, uh, definitely, for example, Amazon, IBM, uh, Azure, whatever, they uh, 
have the architecture that separate the storage unit and computing unit. But using a uh, super high speed network, uh, when uh, data are exchanged or transferred, uh, it doesn't cause any bottleneck. So uh, the, let's uh, think about the definition of big data. So people uh, normally just uh, uh, regard the big data as a data itself. So they always talk about 3B, 4B, 5B. But we have to, you, you may change your concept uh, from today. So big data is actually a platform. So it is a non-expensive platform that is actually distributed to the parallel systems. And that can store a large scale data and process it in parallel. So Hadoop is one solution. Hadoop has been uh, the good solution to store and process uh, the, the massive data set. So any small lab of a university or small companies or research centers, uh, you, can, uh, you can own a, your own supercomputer using four Linux servers or 10 Linux servers uh, to compose it as a, compose them as a, a Hadoop cluster. And since then, there has been another uh, big data solution or platform such as Spark. Uh, that is mostly integrated into Hadoop uh, the cluster or like a NoSQL DB or Elasticsearch. Those are another approach for as a big data platform. And using uh, this kind of system, whenever you collect massive data set, you can uh, apply it to uh, many business. For example, um, uh, this is an example of a sentiment data analysis by collecting data from um, uh, Twitter. So this is a famous event that was happened that was held in Korea like three or four years ago uh, uh, for uh, the game Go. You know that in Asia there is a game called Go, and Google has AlphaGo that uh, compete with a human, uh, and Go is much harder than chess that computer can uh, simulate. But uh, AlphaGo actually uh, beat the human uh, four to one. And uh, this is a sentiment uh, from Twitter for about that uh, event that is uh, analyzed by uh, Hadoop system. And this is also a dashboard uh, made for Korean uh, presidential election on uh, two years ago. Um, so, uh, this is by uh, this is based on actually Elasticsearch, and also this is to analyze the uh, business uh, data set uh, given by uh, uh, Los Angeles Open Data Unit uh, using Hive and uh, BI tool. You can actually uh, find out some insight uh, which business is popular in uh, Los Angeles area. And also, this is a, uh, a traffic data analysis uh, uh, for like uh, seven days between uh, December 2017 to January 2018. Uh, this is actually uh, uh, implemented by the, the, our like MC Dahlia. Let me briefly show you. So, the, um, you know, at the, you, if you look at this, there is a time that is moving. And then you can see the traffic alerts from the driver who report the accident and road closed uh, when they drive. Okay? So you can see based on time, uh, how many report comes from the driver to alert, I mean, to notify the accident and the, the road close. So this is all, all implemented by the Hadoop systems using actually Oracle server, Oracle Cloud. So we can, uh, I just wanted to tell you that uh, you can store the, like a 20 gigabytes of data and you can uh, use Hadoop to analyze it, to find out insight that is not possible using the traditional system. 
But now let's move on to the predictive analysis. So we, we know the Hadoop and other like a big data platform can uh, provide a data analysis uh, approach, but is it possible to do a predictive analysis? I mean, like machine learning is possible in big data platform. Definitely, yes. Um, that is to predict the future trend and pattern with the, the massive data set, right? But traditional system definitely can do it. But uh, using the Hadoop, actually there is a limitation because the MapReduce approach, MapReduce is the computing service given by Hadoop. Um, uh, that's not easy to write the code, plus it has a uh, the, the performance issue, especially uh, the between map task and reduce task, there is an inter intermediate data uh, that uh, has bottleneck. But fortunately, about 2009, uh, UC Berkeley Amp Lab uh, the, introduced the Spark system. There is another uh, distributed parallel computing system. Uh, that is made, uh, mostly in memory computing system uh, using an in memory storage for intermediate data. So, intermediate data doesn't need to be stored into your hard disk. So, uh, in theory, the, if you use Spark computing service, uh, your the calculation, your computing time is 20 to 100 times faster than MapReduce. Um, and the good news is that is actually a good fit for machine learning because machine learning has uh, many iterative algorithms to store the intermediate data into memory. Okay. So it shows that uh, data science, especially for big data science, could be possible. And the Spark community uh, provides the Spark machine learning library, and uh, that helps to build the prediction models uh, to process uh, by using a massive data set to train and test the model. And last several years, we also observed that another the wave came out uh, that is called the deep learning. Uh, that is part of machine learning as well, but it used a neural network. And it has been popular because Google TensorFlow library came out and also our the uh, NVIDIA GPU uh, uh, are adopted for deep learning, especially with the TensorFlow. And that is actually the parallel computing, but uh, within a single board. In, our, uh, in NVIDIA board, you have a uh, multiple cores of the computing unit. So for example, lately there is an NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti uh, chip that has uh, 1280 uh, CUDA cores, like a computing cores. Uh, so your single board of uh, a video card has actually uh, 1280 brains. And also many companies and many open source community provide uh, deep learning libraries to make the user easily write a code. Uh, the, like a traditionally TensorFlow from Google and PyTorch, Keras, etc. And the, the many of you may already know that uh, the deep learning is based on neural network, and for it is mostly uh, uh, has a convolutional neural network and the recurrent neural network and generative adversarial network, simply GANs, right? So uh, CNN conversion neural network is good mostly for image recognition and classification and video analysis. And also uh, recurrent neural network is good for time series prediction and text analysis and uh, speech recognition and synthesis. And GANs, that is good for uh, the media generation, like uh, you can generate photorealistic images. You can even generate fake faces you can swap the faces of a human being to generate a the new video. So the the definitely there is a approach to combine deep learning and Spark. 
So it is actually to combine the parallel distributed parallel computing system and uh, parallel computing board all together. Okay, so for example, Databricks, uh, they provide the deep learning pipelines for Spark, and Yahoo provide the TensorFlow on Spark, and Intel provide the big deal, etc. So those are uh, kind of a trend of a big data uh, these days. Now let me uh, briefly introduce user case of uh, predictive analysis. Uh, this is actually a uh, the example that. I mean, this is actually the exper uh, experiment that we published at uh, the conference uh, that should be held in June, late June in Beijing. And we use um, a big data machine learning approach using uh, Spark and Hadoop. Uh, but we didn't use deep learning for this because we don't need to. So basic idea is to for about add click fraud. Uh, you know, these days many uh, uh, people can write a code that can generate many uh, uh, human, like a human uh, simulating, human pretending the action. So the, um, the your code can uh, automatically go to any uh, link and click to get in. Uh, so many companies who try to analyze their uh, customers using the add click or click through, uh, they have a hard time. Uh, they actually waste their, uh, their money to uh, analyze their uh, customer's behavior. Uh, so especially in the mobile market in the world, uh, they got uh, huge volumes of fraudulent traffic because of this code. So the, uh, we want to predict who actually download the apps and using uh, the classification model uh, based on, I mean, using the traditional approach and uh, big data approach together. So data is actually from talking data uh, in, from Kaggle. Uh, talking data is China's largest independent big data, data service pro, uh, platform. And uh, again, uh, we just try to find out. Um, we uh, we want to predict whether the user, the customer, will download an app after they uh, click on the the advertisement. So when you use a mobile phone, uh, there is a advertisement, and you can click on it, and that advertisement is to introduce their apps, and. Uh, uh, you want to know if the user actually downloaded that app or not. Okay, so you know data is valued these days, so nobody share data. But fortunately, uh, Kaggle uh, website uh, uh, work with the talking data, and talking data provide their data to find out who can download, who is gonna download their app uh, for their advertisement. So original data set size is seven gigabyte. Uh, as a big data, it's not, uh, it, it is not relatively, relatively that big, but still that is good. Uh, that is not easy to be handled by single computer or single desktop computer. And data set format is in CSV format and there are eight columns. And our target column to predict is uh, column name is attributed. So if that is true, it means that a user actually downloaded the, the app. So data field, uh, the, the first data field is IP address of a click. I mean the IP address of the user. And also second is app. Uh, so what app uh, they are, the user is watching, user is looking through, and device is user's device, OS, user's OS. Channel is the the, the, the publisher of the mobile ad advertisement, and click time is the, uh, the uh, timestamp of a click by the user, and attributed time is if the user downloaded the app, uh, that is the time. And is attributed, as I said, this is the target to predict, and also that indicates that uh, if it is true, uh, the user actually downloaded the app. 
So for that, we have used the uh, traditional the, the machine learning system, uh, especially uh, with the Azure Machine Learning uh, Studio. And also the, for Big Data system, we have used the Spark uh, on Databricks and Oracle and Amazon. Uh, but we, I, I'm going to just show you, uh, I, I'm not going to show you the result of Amazon today. And for Azure ML Studio, that is the traditional machine learning uh, the system uh, that is actually freeware. So you can go to Amazon uh, Azure ML Studio to sign up to use it. It has, it uses a single load. And um, uh, we are going to use uh, the, its classification models. And uh, also, we are going to use Spark. Um, the, we do Databricks and also with the Oracle cluster. For Databricks, we only use a two servers as a Spark cluster. And also for Oracle, we have used the 10 nodes, 10 servers. So uh, uh, first, for Azure ML Studio, uh, it is very easy to use because you can use drop and uh, drag and drop uh, uh, approach. So the Azure ML Studio provide a very uh, uh, good uh, modules to build a workflow to predict, to build a model and predict your target. And we, there are also many uh, data engineering modules that you can add. And basically we are gonna use uh, uh, Azure ML's uh, classification algorithm. And also data itself, the data uh, is very uh, unbalanced, the data set, because, you know, as you guess, there are only small portion of the users who downloaded the, the app. So most of the people, they just look at the app, but they don't download it. Or because uh, they use a code to uh, generate uh, like a fraud click uh, action. So anyhow, uh, almost 99.8% data uh, is to show that user didn't download it, the app. And there are like 0.19% user who downloaded the app. Um, so initially we actually uh, uh, decided to use only the one gigabyte of data out of seven gigabyte of data because of, uh, because the Azure ML Studio only allow one gigabyte of data to uh, run even though it, had, it allowed 10 gigabyte of uh, total data set, uh, it takes too long to measure the time. So we all decide to use only one gigabyte of uh, data set out of seven, gigab seven gigabyte of original data set. Um, so anyhow, uh, uh, we started with the data engineering. Uh, first, uh, when we sample it, when we sample data um, uh, from one gigabyte, of a data set, uh, we uh, use a, a partition and sample to actually uh, not to miss any data that is not, that is to show that the user actually downloaded the, the data. I, I mean, it means that uh, when you sample the data, because the data that actually shows that user downloaded the, the app is too small, so if you sample it, um, you may miss those data sets. So you cannot build your model to predict if the user downloaded the app or, or not. Okay? So that is one thing that we did. And another important thing is to balance the data set, we use smooth synthetic minority oversampling technique. Uh, that is to generate, uh, that is to statically generate uh, the the data that says user actually downloaded the app, okay? So uh, originally uh, that portion is 0.19%, but using SMUD, we can uh, improve, increase the, uh, we can generate more data that becomes 11%. So it becomes more balanced. Before it is like a 99 versus 0.1%. But now it is like 89% versus 11%. So that 
uh, uh, help to build a the model to predict the target. And we use a uh, uh, the tree model, decision tree model, because that is good for the uh, unbalanced, imbalanced the data set. Especially we use decision jungle and decision forest modules. And then we focus on our first positive, I mean, we focus on precision in the metrics because precision, uh, uh, if we minimize the first positive, first positive means uh, the, the model can predict that app was downloaded uh, when it, in fact, it wasn't. So uh, it's the model predicted that uh, app, the, the user downloaded an app, but actually the, in real, the user didn't download it an app. That is the first positive case out of four case, right? And so the, if we minimize the first positive, that uh, the precision becomes much higher. I mean, the, the smaller the uh, first positive, the higher precision becomes. That uh, makes the model, I mean, we can measure that model is more accurate. And also the target is to save the money uh, of the company, like a talking data. So we built uh, two class decision jungle, and we got uh, the AUC 0 0.9 and precision one. That is amazing. And then in second model, using a decision forest, we actually get AUC 0 0.997 and precision 0 0.992. And the performance is another issue, another thing that we need to uh, the measure because uh, the, we are talking about the big data system. So for uh, building a, these two models, it takes about 2.5 hours to three hours for one gigabyte of input data set. And this is the table that shows it. So, uh, for both AUC and precision, we believe that decision forest is much better than decision jungle to predict the target to see if the user actually downloaded the, the app or not. And that is for traditional approach. And now we want to use uh, Spark ML, especially for Databricks. Uh, the input data set is one gigabyte, same as traditional uh, Azure ML Studio input. And uh, uh, we do data engineering to uh, uh, generate uh, the more accurate features to build a more accurate model. And based on our code in Spark, in PySpark, uh, we, we realized that the precision of a uh, decision tree classifier is about uh, 0.82%. There is a lot. Uh, worse than the uh, the traditional approach, and also using random forest uh, classifier, uh, we realized that it has like eighty eight percent precision. That is much better than the the first approach, but uh, still it is uh, much worse than the um, the Azure ML uh, traditional approach. Okay, so comparing these two. Uh, uh, considering both the AUC and precision, the decision tree classifier looks much better. Uh, and also, we uh, also we use the Oracle Big Data Spark cluster that has a 10 nodes server. But this time, we uh, uh, update the code to sample the balance the data. It means that uh, from one gigabyte of input data, uh, based on the number of uh, the uh, data set uh, of uh, that shows that is to download the, the app. Uh, we actually uh, uh, consider the data set that the user didn't download to balance the both uh, uh, based on the uh, data set that user actually downloaded. So you can, we can reduce the data set to about 160 megabytes, but this data set is actually based, uh, balanced well because 
the almost like a, the half of them are the data set that I actually uh, downloaded the app. The other half is the data set that the user didn't download. Okay, so you can reduce the data set, but the data set itself is balanced. Using that approach, uh, the, we get much higher accuracy for precision, like a 93.5% and 93.4% for both the decision tree and random press. And also the AUC, uh, we have a much better AUC comparing to uh, the, the previous example, they use data bricks, uh, but without uh, balancing the data. And time-wise, the photo ex execution time, uh, as expected, uh, it uh, takes like 24 seconds to two minutes, comparing to two node spark cluster that has 22 minutes to 550 minutes. And also comparing to a single load, uh, uh, as uh, MS Studio, that has it takes like two to three hours. So uh, 10 nodes spark cluster is a lot faster than a single load Azure ML uh, traditional system. Uh, we do uh, kind of a, like acceptable accuracy. Okay. Um, so now let's move on in summary. So the, uh, in today's talk, I uh, introduced big data. And also, uh, I uh, tried. To, I showed you the add create click a user case uh, using traditional systems and big data systems. Um, in Azure ML Studio, we see that two plus decision forest model is uh, uh, has much better accuracy. And in Spark ML, especially using two nodes Spark cluster over data bricks, uh, the accuracy wasn't that. Accuracy wasn't that good because we didn't uh, adapt, uh, balance the, uh, we didn't uh, balance the data set. Uh, but execution time is like a three to seven times faster than Azure ML. And for Oracle, especially when we balance the sample data, uh, we got kind of closer accuracy, but the, the execution time is 300 times faster than the traditional systems. So this is what I uh, try to sh um, show you. And so this is the end of the presentation. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, thank you, Dr. Hu. Um, that was really interesting. And again, uh, we really appreciate your efforts and uh, everything you do for IG. So thank you. If you have any questions, let me know. We have one question from Mani Gandan. Um, can you please give some industry examples where MongoDB is used? Oh, MongoDB. So any example in MongoDB is said, right? Uh, yeah, any um, industry example. So where actually, Mongo the uh, again, the nobody wants to share their solution, but the, I uh, worked with the ISAG Engineering in Korea. Uh, that is a smart factory company. And we actually um, uh, uh, collect the sensor data from the machines for manufacturing. And then uh, we try to find out, uh, the, we do like a predictable uh, maintenance to find out which machine may uh, break in which uh, how when how long it was running and from which vendor and another example is uh, there is a uh, the uh, like a sales company like Amazon in Korea um, they actually uh, generate too many data for customers and product and they want to are uh, uh, transfer their massive data set to Hadoop system because uh, you know the the database is too expensive comparing to uh, Hadoop system. So uh, we help them. Actually, I advise uh, the some technical issues in Hadoop to um, transfer. I mean, to migrate data from database to uh, Hadoop system. 
So many companies are already uh, adopting uh, this big data system because it has been about 10 years. D uh, did I answer your question well? Uh, yeah, I hope so. So there is also a second question from Mani Gandan. Um, is it possible to share the GitHub repository for the project, especially with Spark ML part? Uh, you mean uh, the, the my paper? Uh, no, he's, I think he's asking for GitHub repository. Like a GitHub repository of my paper itself or any general uh, Spark ML or? So the project you just played for, for the um, prediction of? Uh, After I present this on late June, I could share that with you guys. But uh, that okay. is after I present my work. <laughs> okay, thank you. There's also one. Uh, there's also one question. Uh, Henry is asking: Is it possible to share the slides with him or um, anywhere else? Oh yeah, definitely. I can share this, and because you know, anyhow, this one becomes public, right? So, I think I can share it as slide share, and give it to Dalia, and Dalia may share it. Oh, with okay. Guys. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. I'm sure. Um, also, where are you going to present this um, project in June? People are asking. Oh, in Beijing, China. Yeah. If you in look Beijing. at the like a slide in page twenty or something, I clearly uh, specify the name of the conference. So you may Google it, then you can find out the website. All right. Uh, you guys have any questions? Uh, I think we still have some eight minutes, so we can cover something else if you would like to. All right, there's a question from Mani Gandan again. Thank you. How far is the big deep learning is being used in industry in Spark? Uh, I think the, the, is, the people are struggling to uh, the integrate deep learning and Spark together. The individually, the, uh, the Spark itself and deep learning itself, uh, people already adopted it, but uh, the, the integration of those two, I think uh, the, still we need to go more to uh, use it in industry. Uh. Madigandan, I hope the question is answered. Yeah, okay. Um, so I guess no more questions for now. Yeah. So um, I actually have one question for you. Um, what are the, the biggest projects you've been working on for your entire career related to big data? Um, I think the smart factory big data uh, project that, that I'm working on now in with the ESAC engineering is the biggest uh, kind of a big data project because data size, uh, the, we have like, I think 200 terabyte data set that are from the database, Oracle database. And uh, we are like, a, uh, we transfer them to Hadoop cluster plus we are uh, the we build a the data analysis models but uh, they they are not ready to uh, adopt uh, predictive analysis yet mm. interesting uh, one more question for Mandy Gandan in Spark, if we convert Spark data frame to Pandas data frame using PySpark, uh, will it still be under distributed processing? You, you, you don't need to uh, convert to uh, Panda the data frame because the Panda is only for the uh, single computing, single load computing, not for distributed uh, parallel computing. But if you want, you can convert it to Panda data frame from Spark data frame. But again, that is only uh, when you use it for a single server. Mm. 
not for distributed, I mean, not for multiple servers. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, all right. So thank you everyone for your questions. I guess we are running out of time. Um, again, thank you, Professor. We really appreciate your effort. And today's talk was very interesting, valuable, and help everyone. Uh, it was a great webinar. Yeah, um, people are thanking you too. So I hope to see you guys next webinar, um, which is probably going to be next month. And again, Professor, um, hope to collaborate with you for our future so-called conference. Looking forward to see you again. Thank you, Dalia. Thank you, everyone. All right, we have a small poll, so everyone, please take a minute. We're, I'm like, launching a poll, the small survey about our webinar. Please take two minutes to vote. Thank you. Thank you.